I want to thank the two organizers for acceptance of my proposal and so they gave me an opportunity to be here. Uh, Greek descriptions uh, of a penalty executed in the Achaemenid Persia uh, have recently become the subject of a detailed researchers. Uh, they depictions are so extreme, but sometimes it is difficult to believe uh, that those uh, penalties really existed. Uh, the most unusual of them is so-called the boats or scaphism, and it is a subject of this speech. Uh, well, I want also to apologize to you because I tried to find a good image of uh, scaphism which agree with uh, descriptions, but I couldn't. So I had to uh, create one, so I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> You can see here flies and sun and the men in the chest. The, uh, they are the most important things uh, in this uh, penalty. Well, the boats is a specific type of execution of a death sentence. Uh, the usage of this practice is as, as seen uh, to Persians in the Achaemenid period. Uh, it consists of uh, exposing of an enclosed in the chest sentenced to sunlight until, until uh, he dies suffering after many days. Uh, detailed uh, description of these penalties will be introduced later. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I've got here the detailed uh, description. Uh, well, the name of penalty derives from the Greek uh, word skafe, uh, which has a rather a broad meaning. Bath, boat, bowl, um, in general, anything scooped or uh, hauled out. Uh, well, two large boats or bowls or small boats are uh, consolidated to form the chest for the convicted. So. I tried to uh, draw this. Uh, there are two descriptions of uh, this punishment. Uh, the first in the Plutarch's life of the Ataxerxes, and the other in the Zona, John Zonara's Epitome Historiarum. It seems very important to check out sources of this. Uh, of those passages, because if they are not connected to each other, uh, we are sure, so uh, the punishment is real. The Plutarch's passage, uh, you've got on the handout, uh, the Plutarch's passage is dependent on the thesis of Cnidus, and it appears in every issue of the Fragments of Ctesias by Miller, Gilmore, Jacobi, and so on. Uh, the, the second passage in the Epitome Historialum by John Zonaras seems to be unknown in the Achaemenid Persian studies. However, early modern scholars knew it. In the first half of the 19th century, has been born the opinion that Zonaras uh, writing his work used in his first books only Bible, Herodotus, Thucydides, and Xenophon. But we are sure, so description of the scapism uh, is not from those works. Although Zonara's text is almost completely unknown, so this false opinion is still uh, repeated. Okay, uh, the both texts 
the first slightly, uh, although up, uh, apart uh, uh, apart from the length, uh, length of a death of convict, uh, at any point is not excluded. Uh, so Plutarch's work, as well as Zonaras, characterizes. Uh, characterizes uh, well, I'm sorry. These authors had to cut uh, and summary their, their sources. Uh, therefore, uh, we should keep in mind that even in analyzed passages, they had to, to more or less abbreviate. Uh, nevertheless, we can see in the text these same phrases. Uh, is it correct? Okay. Exact. Uh, well, these same phrases uh, are marked in red. Uh, and uh, we can see, so, even the order in the phrases of uh, these same words and, uh, well, these words are the same and even the order is the same. The one exception is, at the beginning we've got uh, skafas dio and dio skafas, but after that uh, everything is in the same order. Identical phrases are proof that the texts are dependent on, on the, the same source, but it is not known uh, whether uh, whether directly or, or uh, indirectly. For example, Zonaras could use Ctesias or only Plutarch's work, uh, but in my opinion, not any other source, because if someone had abbreviated Ctesias or Plutarch and Zonaras abbreviated this work, it is impossible that Zonaras repeat uh, those same phrases which Ctesias used. Uh, there's only one problem. Whether Zonaras draw uh, from this same source, so Plutarch, or simply Zonaras extended the version of Plutarch, and uh, hence uh, come some uh, differences. The first step to resolve this problem is to check out both texts. It seems uh, legitimate to assume that if Zonaras tried to preserve at least the sense of Plutarch's uh, statement, he shouldn't add uh, any new detail. Uh, but if he tried to develop uh, Plutarch's story, he should use uh, all the uh, Plutarch's account and not miss any information contained in the Plutarch's work. Uh, meanwhile, almost half of the Plutarch's account does not appear uh, in the Zonaras, while about one third part of Zonaras' description isn't attested in Plutarch. We can see here uh, the underlined text is a text with the same sense or identical, and here we've got the only phrases uh, excluding. Uh, so mm. Uh, so we can see, so uh, perhaps they had the common source. Uh, another issue which should be touched here is a question of language. Because it may indicate whether Zonaras writes his own words, follows Plutarch, or directly, directly rewrite uh, from Ctesias. Of course, it can lead astray because many authors making the extracts from sources are changing archaic, unknown or inappropriated uh, forms to more familiar to them. I am not an expert uh, in a history of Greek language, but even I can see some dependencies. 
I have analyzed the vocabulary of the, uh, that uh, appears uh, in Zonaras. While the text before and after the reporting passage is written in the Byzantine Greek, but in the description of scapism, there is only classical vocabulary. There is no word that did not exist during the classical period, and almost all forms are confirmed, are confirmed during this period, while among the rest there is no views uh, that would be developed in the manner unusual for a classical period. It should be stressed so lexical forms or oh, maybe I should uh, okay. uh, Okay. It should be stressed, so lexical forms are not typical for Attic authors. Uh, instead of Attic TT forms, uh, there are um, original SS forms. Uh, we can see it, uh, for example, uh, for example here, instead of uh, uh, Attic uh, Tetares, we've got Tessares. Uh, I know, so it's different, word, but we've got here SS instead of TT forms. Although Zonaras delight in Attic forms uh, and in his work very fre frequently appears TT forms, but in this passage he didn't make any correction and uh, this suggests a uh, direct extract from uh, his source. There are also uh, very rare uh, word forms, which are primarily certified in Homer, uh, Ephizanusi, and uh, Proiesi. Such features are typical for early uh, historiography, and according to Bigwood, also Ptesias used them. Uh, Uh, there's also a question of uh, hiatus and uh, figura, figurae etymologicae, but uh, I, uh, I want only to sign this, so it is also uh, made in typical way for the uh, early Greek historiography. Therefore, it seems reasonable to claim that Zonera's sources wasn't Plutarch's work, but another source common with Plutarch's Ctesias. Since we know that both descriptions are dependent on the same source, we should analyze the, uh, the above mentioned two descriptions as a whole. Uh, at first, we should consider the historical, historical, I'm sorry, historical context. The majority of the Persian penalties uh, has its prototype in Assyria. Various penalties, uh, many type, types of <coughs> impalement, flying, decapitation, etc. Uh, have been used there, but scapism is not attested. However, we can observe very similar uh, sanctions in later ages and uh, very often they are attested in much more uh, serious sources. So let's have a look at the description of penalty. Firstly, the instrument of torture uh, should be discussed. Uh, I mean two big buffs or little boats. Uh, for that purpose uh, for what purpose uh, did they put a convict in a special prepared tool while in the other cultures uh, often convict was simply buried in the ground? Of course, the only reason uh, for this could be, like Plutarch states, to easily watch a dead convict. 
On the other hand, the earth was sacred for the Persians. They didn't bury even their related, because it would make a ritual, ritual impurity uh, for the earth. This is why they couldn't bury uh, the convict to let him die. Another important element of a description is, a, is the mixture of honey and milk which uh, is being drunk by the convict and, uh, and then put on his face. We can notice that the mixture of honey and milk is a common theme uh, in the Greek culture since Homer and always appears uh, in a positive uh, context. Here, al alternatively, it acts as a tool of torture. Uh, in this context, uh, in the usage of mixture, well, in this context, is the usage of this mixture justified? Yes. It's even the constitutive uh, part of this punishment. The mixture of milk and honey uh, as a drink has a laxative effect, which is very important for development of penalty. The act of uh, putting the mixture of a convict's face uh, is to attract insects. A detail which is uh, very important for our reflections uh, is information what happened if someone uh, does not want to drink the mixture. His eyes uh, are to be uh, pricked. We, uh, why would anyone refuse to consume uh, such a drink? It was considered as a very tasty thing. Only person that uh, could uh, only person that could refuse was someone who knew uh, what the consumption of this drink means and what are the repercussions. The captors could use any different uh, devices to convince the convict to drink the mixture. Uh, why then would they prick his eyes? Well, the eye is the most uh, inert organ in the whole uh, human body. So prick, uh, pricking, uh, it brings the greatest pain. It would indicate that the convict really didn't want to drink. So to force him, they had to use the hardest tool. Uh, when it comes to the torture, uh, the convict's skin is very important. Uh, as I saw in the picture, uh, the sun, it is a sunburn uh, because it is sunburned every day and insects, the flies, uh, also draw okay. uh, sun and insects beating cause uh, future uh, destruction of a convict skin. At this time, much of the rare and uh, humidity inside the chest led to the future degradation of the skin. For us, it is obvious, but flies lay eggs and uh, the new flies originate from them. However, in the ancient Greece, uh, it wasn't so obvious. Aristotle believed that uh, flies are born from meat like rats from rats. Uh, this view was refuted by uh, Francesco Redi in 18th century. But in our description, it is a natural, uh, the eggs and flies, or flies and eggs, it is a natural consequence of uh, emergence of flies. Please pay your attention to the link between the convicts uh, diarrhea and uh, appearance of a uh, laugh in the chest. The mixture of milk and honey causes diarrhea, uh, which is the ideal uh, environment for flies. Indeed, flies lay their eggs uh, in the dung uh, only 
one, one fly lays about 100 eggs every two, three or five, uh, four days. After 24 hours, uh, there is, uh, uh, we've got the larves, uh, depending on the quality of a fertilizer, especially its uh, fluidity, uh, the water is better. Uh, larves uh, grow up uh, from several days in the best environment to the two months in the worst. So the conditions made here are ideal uh, for flies. One larva grows up from uh, 2 millimeters uh, to 12. Uh, it is worth to note one, one kilo uh, of uh, big uh, dunk gives the opportunity to develop uh, up to uh, 1,500 larves. However, there is no peak uh, dunk according to the uh, research. Uh, but according to the researchers, uh, the humus uh, is uh, very close in the term of quality. Moreover, there is not only uh, much more fertilizer, but also rooting flesh. It is a good feed for the larves. larves. Uh, could a man die so long by this penalty? It is difficult to say. Jacobs, after the medical consultation, says yes. During the, this execution, the convict dies because of, the, of uh, poisoning of blood. Uh, until the larve grow up, and a convict is poisoned to death, it could uh, take many days. Uh, finally, the scap is the scapism a real punishment? Uh, uh, or the Ctesias idea? It's difficult to answer this question. It is worth to note that Ctesias gives the description of his penalty among three cruel uh, Uh, for this question. It is worth to note that Ctesias gives the description of these penalties among three cruel punishments. One of them cer certainly existed. It is attested in many sources. But after an examination, we have to say that the second one certainly hasn't existed. It is very easy to uncover this. The case of scap is, is very different. Uh, it isn't attested in other souls, uh, but the elements of description would indicate that this is true. Not burying convict in the ground, uh, although the Greeks uh, attributed such practices in the black legends of Persians. The combination of flies and their eggs which wasn't obvious for Greeks. The usage of milk and honey, uh, Greeks always uh, use this in a positive context. Uh, the resistance of uh, convict and the way to force him to drink. We cannot find the item uh, which is not obvious lie. All these features could indicate that the penalty has actually existed. On the other hand, there is no such penalty in other sources. Uh, although Ctesias uh, spoke about it at least twice, and uh, some descriptions suggest, so it is a common practice. Uh, in addition, the description was written by Ctesias, recognized medic. His medical works were often uh, uh, referenced in ancient times. 
uh, he was educated in the one of the best medical school in the ancient Greek world. Uh, he was the personal, personal physician of a king of the greatest empire in the world. So uh, he was, but he was also a historian, even in antiquity, called the biggest liar. So if someone could create such description, Ctesias would be the best to do so. Well, nevertheless, if the description is not a brilliant invention of Ctesias, it seems most likely that we've got here an actually existing and applicable punishment. Thank you for your attention.